welcome back to the Obsession Engineering Garage for the next instalment of this S1000RR engine being stripped and then rebuilt. In the last instalment I checked the valve clearances, did a leak down test and checked the cam timing. This time we're going to take the cylinder head off, so take the cams out first, take the cylinder head off and then turn the engine upside down and have a look at some of the bottom end stuff in it. The first job I'm going to do is to take the camshaft out of the engine. So I'm going to put it back to top dead centre. Then I'm going to take the cam chain tensioner out, which on the front of this engine sits here. That removes all the tension off the cam chain. And then bit by bit, I will undo these cap bolts that hold the cams in. And slowly, sort of stage by stage, doing opposite, I'm going to raise those up and take the cam covers off. These BMW ones are quite sturdy, on some bikes, especially say ZXR 400s, the cam caps are really fragile, so you have to be careful. Instead of just undoing one bolt and taking it all the way out, take them a little bit out at a time, just so it comes up fairly evenly. As you can see here, I've taken the cam chain tensioner out and I've taken the cam caps off. And I just thought I'd do a little bit about timing marks. Because if you're doing this at home to do alter valve clearances or well, take an engine apart, there'll be timing marks. This BMW has these little marks to tell you top dead centre. A lot of manufacturers put like a line here to line up with a crankcase mark or something. It'll tell you in a workshop manual. And then, even though I've got the cam timing tool, there's little lines in the cylinder head look on the cams, down here, down here, that tell you where the cams line up. But it is, of course, quite possible to get the cam 180 degrees out, because the lines would still line up. So it's not necessarily a bad idea to put a little pen or paint mark on the uh, on the cam. If you're doing this at home and you're doing cam chain tensioning, or uh, sorry, valve clearance adjustment, and you're going to be putting the cameras back in again, one of the other little tricks is you can put a little little paint mark or pen line on the cam chain, on the sprocket, and on the crank chain where the cam chain goes on the crank, because then you really can't get it wrong. All I've done now is I've unhooked the cam chain off the end of the cams and picked the cams out. If you were going to adjust your valve clearances, what you would be adjusting, if I pull this little rocker arm out of the way, is altering that little valve shim. So, if I get a magnet, I'll pick the little valve shim up, and as you can see, tiny little thin metal valve, uh, valve shim. So they are a very specific thickness, and obviously you can buy them in different thicknesses. And we'll put that one back in for now, and that sits underneath the rocker arm. On these BMW engines, the cam pushes on the rocker arm, which pushes the valve down. A lot of stuff, especially Japanese bikes, have, instead of having a rocker arm, they have what they call bucket and shim. So, move that out of the way, it'd actually have a machined recess in the cylinder head here, and like a upturned bucket, that sits over the valve and over the shim. So you just have to take the bucket off, take the shim out, change the shim, put it all back together again. So that would be how you would adjust your clearance. And also you would calculate from the valve clearance you've measured and the valve clearance you're aiming for what difference, difference in shim you require. Fairly simple, really. So all I've done now is I've taken the cam chain tensioner blades out by pulling out a couple of pins down here, pulling the blades out, and on the BMs, you can take the cam chain out. It just sort of slides in and out the top or bottom of the engine without having to take everything in his, uh, everything apart. A lot of Japanese stuff especially, you have to split the crankcases before you can change the cam chain. So next thing I'm going to do is take the cylinder head off. So obviously I'm going to undo all these bolts down here in a crisscross pattern so that it comes off evenly and then I'm going to lift the head off. That's all the cylinder head bolts out now so all I need to do is wobble the head off. There we go, we shall bring you in for a closer look. So we can see from this Pistons of, uh, are looking pretty good. There's no big amounts of carbon build-up, just a little bit of carbon around the edges, so that's okay. And 
same with this we've got a relatively clean combustion area so that's looking pretty good they're really nicely machined out combustion areas in these BMW heads they really are a well-made engine so that's all looking pretty good so after a bit of a lunch break I shall start pulling the bottom end apart so I've just lifted the head gasket off it and the thing to note on BMWs is the marking for the head gasket this is what they refer to as a one hole some of them are two holes they do sort of a kit spec one with no holes in it but that's far too small to ever use so the next thing i'm going to do i was going to turn it upside down and pull the sump off it but in fact because i'm in this nice workshop bench um frame i'm going to whip the covers off it and i'm going to pull the clutch apart and do the bits sort of out the sides of the engine while it's nice and stable and then turn it upside down I've got the alternator cover off now and I've also taken out all the starter gears and I've rearranged them in the cover the way they came out the bike so that it's easier to reference them later before I put them back in. So I'll turn the engine around and do the clutch next. Now that I've got the clutch cover off I'm going to take these bolts out that secure the clutch springs and I'm just going to take the pressure plate off. I'm going to leave the uh, clutch plates in for now because I have a special technique for removing the clutch nut which I shall show you. So now that I've got the pressure plate off, my way of undoing this big clutch nut is to attack it with my electric impact gun. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to push the clutch plates with my thumb like that. And then that will hold the clutch pack and the gearbox and everything against the engine to stop it rotating too easily. And the electric impact gun should then have enough uh, go to take the clutch nut off. If the crank does start to turn, I have a socket, a socket on the end of the crank to say correctly. So that'll help that stop turning. So I shall put you up here for a second. Hopefully you can see all right from there. And there you go, clutch nut undone. Now that I've got the clutch nut undone, I can just slide the entire clutch pack out like that. Making sure you've got the washer off the back of it. Which is actually sticking to it with the oil. So that I can leave together and just pop in the box with all the other bits. Then I need to get in here with a little pair of pliers or something and hook the bearing out of the middle of the clutch so that I can wiggle the basket off because the water pump and oil pump drive is driven off the back of the clutch basket. I thought I'd do a little demonstration of how the oil pump runs. See, this is the oil pump in here and it's run by this chain that runs up to the back of the clutch basket. I'll do that again. This chain that runs up to the back of the clutch basket and the water pump drives straight off the front of the oil pump. So what happens is, if I turn the crankshaft, the crankshaft drives the primary drive that's on the back of the clutch, which drives the oil pump. So the oil pump is always running when the crank is spinning. Easy. So the clutch basket just slides straight out the front here, and then you're left with the bearings and the uh, bits that drive that the clutch basket sits on, and the oil pump drive behind it. So I shall undo the bolts down here that hold the oil pump drive gear on and I can take the chain off and um, yeah all the bits that run that. Thanks for watching and join us again next time while we'll take the bottom end apart.